Dear students, welcome to the course Introduction to Metaphysics of Sanskrit Language. This is lecture 18. In the last lecture, I explained you Manasik Shastra Vidya. With the reference of that only, uh, there is one concept that is Marma Bhedi Shabda Bada, which was also needed to be taught. So, first we will uh, discuss that and then we'll be moved, we will move to the unit 5. What is Marma Bhedi Shabda Bada? For understanding that concept, we again need to go back to the understanding of chakras. As I explained you that this uh, structure where we possess these chakras, so ch chakra is a kind of marma isthan. Marma isthan means vital points. Vital points are nothing but the condensed, are the points where condensed state of energy is present. That, that's why if somebody hurts uh, any, any person or any creature at that particular locus, that the possible or you can say the injury, the possible result can go up to any extent uh, up to the death also. That means kisi bhi vyakti ka agar marm isthan ko chot pahuncha de koi, to kisi bhi jeev mein, not only in the human beings, in all the manifested entities, if vital points are hurt, then automatically the state is going to be very complicated up to the death can possible. So, uh, here what is uh, needed to be understood like when we dealt the, with this structure in the cognitive process, we need to have one recap that you can see that the processing unit, in the processing unit, I just ex used this word central processing unit that means the CPU of your own existence is consisting of buddhi, manas, then ahankar, then prakriti and purush. These five are the uh, actual tattvas who are involved in processing of the stimuli. So, in turn, if any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, impulse is received, which is going to hurt any of this unit, starting from buddhi, going to the purush. So, from buddhi to purush, if any, ka, any of the category, buddhi, manas, ahankar, prakriti, purush is going, uh, is in danger, that means uh, it, it, there is a possibility of being hurt at these locus. What happens? The severity of the injury is unmeasured. And that the same thing I explained you when I showed you this table like chakras and marmasthanas. Physical existence in a human body, physical locus and then metaphysical locus. And then if they are hurt, what happens? So, I, why I am taking this again here? You see that if, if somebody uses a word like we are using, suppose in the class itself, if I scolded someone very badly, that you felt so much of humiliated or hurt or I used such a harsh word that just pierced your marmasthana because stimuli are five, shabda, sparsha, rupa, rasa and gandh. We are dealing with the bhasha, that means shabda dominated, okay. Even if a teacher uh, beats a student, that is physical violence, a kind of not intentionally done, maybe teacher has not done intentionally, then also, if you, uh, if the person's vital point is, is going to, is getting hurt, there can be severe consequences. So, if you are using bhasha, shabda, shabda is the stimuli and that is being processed at the last uh, unit of the CPU, that is the Purush Tattva. So, your consciousness is receiving the Shabda. Delimited consciousness is receiving Shabda. Automatically, if your delimited consciousness receives a very fearful, harsh, piercing Shabda, that will create a state of severe stage of trauma, etc., etc. That means the severity of the impact can range from normal conditions to the extremities like death also. And for that uh, understanding, in Sanskrit we have the concept of Shabd Bhedi 
मर्म भेदी शब्द बाढ़ दैट मीन्स बाढ़ इज एन एरो बाढ़ मीन्स एरो एंड शब्द मीन्स एन अपॉइंटेड एरो मेड ऑफ वर्ड्स समबडी इज कंटिन्यूसली ब्लेमिंग यू फॉर समथिंग और स्पीकिंग वेरी हार्श वर्ड्स टू यू दे आर अ काइंड ऑफ पॉइंटेड एरोज piercing words hurting words so they are known as shabd baad number 1 even uh, when uh, somebody is uh, not uh, in an intention to say you or to hurt you but because of his or her own anger or some kind of distracted state somebody speaks very badly to you then also you feel humiliated or you don't get uh, a positive feeling after that interaction and then you try to distance yourself from that that particular event or effect why it happens just because words are very powerful and they work like a piercing arrow and they can pierce or they can hurt your marm sthanas directly because our shabd stimuli is processed by our delimited consciousness itself so purush jis cheez ko acha nahi manega usse usko chot pahunchegi and in another sense if uh, this purush tatva can be located you can see this purush tatva is located in swadhisthana chakra so in turn the locus of purush tatva is swadhisthana chakra so what is happening by receiving that harsh word or shabd your purush tatva which is located in swadhisthana chakra is getting hurt in turn this signifies that your swadhisthana chakra is getting hurt आपकी वो ऊर्जा चोट खा रही है जो स्वादिष्ठान चक्र से निकल रही है सो इन दैट स्टेज व्हाट हैपेंस योर वंस योर चक्र चक बिकॉज चक्र इज इट सेल्फ अमर स्थान इट्स अ वाइटल पॉइंट बिकॉज एनर्जी इज कॉन्डेंस एट दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट और लोकस दैट इज व्हाई ईच एंड एवरी चक्र इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ मर्म स्थान एंड इफ स्वादिष्ठान चक्र इज गेटिंग हर्ट automatically the harsh words are going to impact severely one narration for example with, uh, related with this understanding marm bhedi shabd baad one narration from kathopanishad anyone who has uh, learned or heard about upanishads or the stories available in upanishads can understand this is a story kathopanishad is a is a upanishad and in that upanishad there is a story of yam and nachiketa yam nachiketa samvad yam who is yam yam is supposed to be the deity of death mrityu ke devata ke roop mein unko samjha jata hai yamraj so this is a general understanding but in real understanding yamraj is dharmaraj the one who decides the fruit of your actions as per your actions performed that is dharmaraj and the name of that dharmaraj is yamaraj so in turn what is the story in yama nachiketa samvad yam uh, nachiketa is a very small 7 to 8 years boy and his father is a rishi he decides to perform yajna in which he declares that i am going to donate everything that i possess all the riches that i possess all belongings that i possess i want to donate them in the yajna mere paas jo kuch bhi hai main us yajna mein daan kar dunga once he completed the yajna he started giving everything to everyone then what you nachiketa saw that his father is giving the uh, uh, cows donating the cows who are not so good but he is trying to keep few of them who are very good so he wanted to know that why he is keeping that so first of all the uh, thought was like maybe i am he, they are here i am his son so he may be keeping for me secondly after some time he got the curiosity i am also belonging to him 
मैं भी तो उनका बिलोंगिंग हूं ना तो मुझे किसे देंगे बिकॉज द बॉय इज वेरी स्मॉल ए वेरी नेचुरल क्यूरियोसिटी ही हैड सो आई एम ऑल्सो हिज बिलोंगिंग सो हुम ही इज गोइंग टू गिव मी ही वेंट टू हिज फादर टू द ऋषि because rishi has already completed the yajj and once you are in a process of ritualistic yajj automatically you recite the mantras along with that you offer the offerings to the fire so automatically your chakras are in ignited state you are in a state that you are linked with the cosmic reality you possess so much of energy so automatically your shabda sparsha rupa rasagandha all the tanmatras are or strong enough to create any impact number 1 so rishi is a rishi and all he has already performed the yajja so he is in the you consider like his chakras are in the ignited state so whatever uh, impact the person can make by creating any stimuli is he the rishi is competent enough so once the chiketa ask the question whom you are going to give me kisko mujhe dene jata hai dene ja rahe ho so once at first time when he asked he ignored at the second time he again repeated the same question mujhe batao mujhe kise dene ja rahe ho second time also he ignored again third time he asked the same question just like the small kids are adamant enough to get the answer he was also doing the same thing so at the last at the third time when he heard he got angry and he said i am going to give you to yamaraj main tumhe yam ko deta hu i am going to give you death main mrityu ko sopta hu tumko theek hai jao as he is already in a in an ignited state of the chakras his words are very powerful and the boy is so small that his energy centers are in a native state naturally vibrating with the cosmic energy because the chit is very transparent and clean i told you if the chit is very transparent and clean there are no uh, abrasions or scratches automatically reality gets reflected in in that surface of itself so the boy got fainted nachiketa behosh ho gaya and for the three nights he remained unconscious तीन रात तक उसको होश नहीं आया विद इन थ्री नाइट इन दो थ्री नाइट वॉट हैपेंड दैट इज नरेटेड इन यवन अचिकेता संवाद इन हिज अनकॉन्शियस स्टेट ही सीज हिमसेल्फ दैट ही रीच एट द हाउस ऑफ यमराज एंड बिकॉज यमराज इज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन द होम ही स्टेड आउटसाइड द डोर वेन ही रिटर्न बैक देन ही सॉ दैट अ बॉय इज Uh, standing sitting outside his house at the door and for the three nights he is waiting for him so he said that you are a very small kid you are not supposed to be here at this stage so why had you come here um, you ask any of the three things because you are here for the three nights i will give you three uh, vardan aap jo maning mangenge your three wishes are going to be granted aap tumne jo chahiye वो मांग लो सो फर्स्ट फर्स्ट इन द फर्स्ट वरदान वॉट ही एक्सप्रेस एज इज विश इज डिजायर कि वंस आई रिटर्न टू माई होम माई फादर वोड वुडेंट गेट एंग्री एट मी जब मैं वापस लौटूँ तो मेरे पिता मुझे डांटे नहीं क्रोध ना करें काम हो जाता है नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट ही स्टार्ट आस्किंग द क्वेश्चन अबाउट लाइफ एंड डेथ what happens after life what happens uh, when uh, we are why we come to the life and what what happens when we are dead or what happens after the life then yamaraj is very astonished also and uh, in a position of a problem because the kid is so small he he can he thinks like ki ye itna chhota hai isko itna bada rahasya kaise sataau he says like the the reason the question the answer the quest which is is still un uh, unmeasured or you can say unsorted for the mo- who most intelligible persons how you are going to get them get that answer tum kaise samajh paoge you won't be able to understand that thing so uh, he starts giving him so many of the allurements ye le lo 
लड्डू ले लो वेल्थ ले लो सो मैनी थिंग्स सो मैनी ऑप्शन ही गिव्स ही प्रोवाइड्स हिम ही रिजेक्टेड ऑल ऑफ देम कि तुम्हें ये मिल जाएगा तुम ऐसा हो जाओगे तुम्हें ये सब कुछ हो जाएगा ही डजेंट एक्सेप्ट नो आई डोंट नीड एनी ऑफ देम आई नीड माई आंसर now when he sees like the boy is so adamant at his own decisions and determinations so he starts teaching him what is actually life what happens after death or what is real quest of life the third question was coming from the same question like what is the real quest of life who am i to main kaun hu gyan kya hai vidya kaise milti hai और कौन कैसे पहचानेंगे कि वो विद्यावान है देन ओनली द डिस्कोर्स कम्स लाइक दे आर आर टू पॉसिबल विद्या द सेम डिस्कोर्स दैट इज आई हैव टोल्ड यू परा एंड अपरा दो प्रकार की नॉलेज है एंड वी हैव टू ट्रेस पास द अपरा टू गेट द परा बिकॉज एम्पीरिकल नॉलेज इज द लास्ट वन विच डोमिनेट्स एंड दैट इज द लास्ट एविडेंस सो इन दैट डिस्कोर्स इट सेल्फ यू विल फाइंड दैट ए लॉट ऑफ द knowledge is present in kathopanishad uh, so here the impact of the words of the rishi can be very easily understood because the boy got fainted just because his uh, chakras were involved in that stage where uh, you can say harsh words of the father hurt the chakra of the boy to so, aapko kya karna hai so because we are learning the language भाषा के बारे में पढ़ाया है इस कोर्स में मैंने सो वी नीड टू हैव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेरी प्रॉपरली इवन इफ वी वांट टू निगोशिएट समथिंग वी वांट टू डिनाई समथिंग टू समवन देन आल्सो आवर वर्ड्स मस्ट नॉट कन्वे दैट काइंड ऑफ पॉइंटेड एर सॉल्ट और यू कैन से एन पॉइंटेड एरो विच कैन विच इज गोइंग टू पियर्स द मर्मस्थान ऑफ अदर्स अदरवाइज नंबर वन वॉट विल हैपन यू विल लूज योर ओन रेस्पेक्ट number 2 you are going to make others suffer and the cycle of suffering is like that if you are going to hurt someone then the cycle is going to move and the same suffering is going to come you come back to you again as a return gift so ye nahi sochna hai ki koi naya maine to kar diya to mere sath to kuch nahi hone wala aisa nahi hai if you have done something wrong the, the return gift is already created at that time itself it will come back to you in any of the man so marma bhedi shabd baad is a part of uh, understanding which must be accepted by everyone ja- till uh, in the life also and in uh, our day to day behavior also when we are using shabd stimuli we need to be very careful what we are saying and specifically in that also when we are dealing with the kids the children whose chakras are not covered or shielded because they have not why we say like abhi tum experienced nahi ho in your jobs also you will feel like you are not experienced you need experience to so uh, we say like you give us opportunity we will be experienced so hum karne kya wale hain experience mein we are going to get the afflictions हम वो लाइनें खींचने वाले हैं जिसके बाद हमें याद रहेगा कि अगर कोई हमें ये कहेगा तो हम ये रिस्पांस देंगे अगर कोई ये कहेगा तो हम ये रिस्पांस देंगे सो इन टर्न व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन द क्लीन एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट स्लेट इज गोइंग टू बी फुलफिल्ड बाय एफ्लिक्शंस अलॉट ऑफ एफ्लिक्शंस एंड दे आर नेम्ड एज एक्सपीरियंस we have experience because we have already faced that con- condition so now your ch- you know the how to tackle that situation or that word because you have experienced it in the past so now you know how to tackle that harshness again so in turn your ch- you are able to shield your chakra or energy from that negative impact this is something which is shielding or in turn we can say it is our experience तो हम क्या करते हैं अपने लाइफ के इम्प्रेशंस को एक्यूमुलेट करते करते उसको पूरी तरीके से ऐसा बना लेते हैं खुद को कि हम खुद को कवर कैसे कर सकें हाउ टू प्रोटेक्ट अवर पॉजिटिव एनर्जी फ्रॉम द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द नेगेटिव एनर्जीज विच वी आर रेगुलरली टैकलिंग दिस इज समथिंग विच इज हैपनिंग विद अस वेन वी आर कमिंग फ्रॉम लाइक एट टेन और टेन टू फोर्टी फिफ्टी सिक्सटी ईयर्स 
after that what happens again the stage cycles back so the stage of a child when the clean transparent slate is over there and stage of then older person is similar why because neuronal regeneration or you can say neural regeneration is a condition when we were born we had the, new, the, the kind of neurons we had are continuously in regeneration and till the age of 50 to 60 years we our neurons are completely replaced so ab ye samajh kar chalo ki jo aap lekar aaye the wo 50 se 60 saal ke baad yani budhape mein wo phir se waisi hi condition create hone wali hai so what is happening in in between whatever you accumulate that gives you the experience to shield yourself from different types of impressions maybe rajasic maybe tamasic maybe sattvic but in the older people also the same condition prevails so when you say the harsh words to the older ones also they also feel the same kind of pain or you can say the piercing pain which can be fatal easily fatal ya to heart attack ho sakta hai ya wo coma mein ja sakte hain isliye we are advised not to tell so many bad things with to the older people who are not able to sustain with that news or sustain with that information why this is the reason because the marmasthanas are the vital points and they are very susceptible for any kind of severity of the condition so we need to be very careful while using our bhasha bhasha is that gift to us which can create the reality which can destroy yourself which can destroy the existence itself because the transcendental one is also bhasha so bhasha is a very powerful thing we need to be very cautious when we use it that is a power to us that is a gift to us so now after this uh, for this understanding also i brought this book this is the secrets of marmasthanas and this book uh, is very uh, written in a very simple language whenever you get a time you can read this book because in this uh, book actually marmasthanas and chakras after that also there are so many vital points in uh, the creature in each and every organism and on that basis itself we know acupressure points acupuncture is a therapy so in ayurveda also in other pathies also we use those vital points to release the excess pressure from the body itself from the physical body itself though actual vital points or marmasthan is a metaphysical structure you cannot locate it but because we know we can locate the condensed point or the, we can locate the locus where the energy is condensed so that is considered as a marma sthan and on that knowledge on the basis of that knowledge itself we do acupuncture also acupressure and ac acupressure points are there and acupuncture is a therapy is a practice which was done so uh, the this uh, this knowledge will be very uh, helpful whenever you want to know more about it after this we need to uh, know the next thing that is our unit 5 because we are going to move from this manasik shastra vidya because in the manasik shastra vidya itself i uh, told ex a lot of the things and after that we were entering into the next unit that was the unit 5 where ac actually the summary of our course is uh, presented systematically what we have learnt in this course till now so the first is we, uh, we are having these topics the first is the oral culture the oral culture uh, as i have explained from the beginning itself indian knowledge co corpus is dominated of the oral tradition first thing we were not obsessed with the written versions so bhasha doesn't have only the scriptural one bhasha is that which belongs to the orality so first thing is uh, if now again if the question is asked what is bhasha so bhasha or language what is language then kya hai answer hoga language is a speech language is orality language is not a means or just a means of communication it's a communion with the self three things jo humne is course mein samjhi hain 
language is not only a physical entity, it is metaphysical also because it trespasses the structures of the physicality that is the dhvani, varna or akshara. After that also its existence is available in the form of energy centers which are available as the chakras. I already explained that in, uh, in the chakras, Swadishthana chakra and Madhipura chakra are basically a lot of uh, uh, all the time it is functional and Anahata chakra is related with the emotional bonds. So, automatically if you get any news related with your uh, child or with uh, your parent or with anyone with whom you are in emotional bond, your Anahata chakra is going to be impacted. So, the uh, power to bear that particular kind of news must be there. That is why we try to abstain from giving that information to the child also and to the older people also. And in between everything is there. We are considered that in this age group, we are the most powerful to you are very, we are very uh, good at bearing the things. So, the capacity of bearing the pressure is understood to be present in this phase a lot. Still, it is not the hard and fast rule because we are also in continuous experience. Slowly, we move to have uh, uh, an identity or to have an uh, understanding how to shield yourself. So basically when we are in routinal practice what we have to do, we have to shield ourselves with the negative energies or the you can say with the an impacts which are negative in nature and we have to magnify our inner potential which is positive. So, apne under ki positive energy ko magnify karna hai, bahar ki negative energy se shield karna hai. If we are able to do that, then we are successful in achieving anything, anything in our whole life. So, each at each and every point of your life, you have to understand how to magnify your own potentials, your own positive energies and how to tackle the negative energy coming from outside the things. And that is the highest possible management. Management ki science mein aur kuch nahi padhana chahiye, sirf itna batana chahiye ki kaise bahar ki energy ko tackle karna hai. Apni energy ko nasht kiye bina. So, if you are able to master that sciences, that is going to be the highest possible science. And in tackling the negative energies outside, we have a lot of the tools and they are also uh, narrated in Srimad Bhagavad Gita itself. Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, Upeksha. These are the four tools through which we tackle the negative energies coming to us. Maitri means friendship. The one who is becoming friendly to you is providing you the good uh, positive energy or positive vibes. Then you should be in a state of friendship with that person or Maitri. Karuna is compassion. The one who needs your compassion means Karuna. Ki ye vekti iske paas ye nahi hai, to is, iske saath ye uh, isko dena chahiye. Like somebody is in a, uh, is a, in an urgent need of something. Like in examination, you show a lot of Karuna. Right? Iske paas nahi hai, de dete hai. That is compassion. And uh, Maitri Karuna Mudita. Mudita means happiness. The one who is very happy, you should be, uh, you should be participate in sharing that happiness or magnifying that in that happiness. Mudit hai koi prasanna rehta hai, to uske saath apni prasannata bhi aap share kar sakte hai. Wo mudita hai. And last one is Upeksha. The one who doesn't deserve your energy, your time, your uh, presence, you need to ignore that thing. So, ignorance, not in 99% time what mistake we do, we in, enter into the that state where we waste our energy in tackling those, those persons or in tackling those negative ones. That is not supposed to be done. Ignore karna, yani upeksha is the last tool to tackle that kind of energy which is not positive. Without entering into that, without wasting your positive energies in that stage, you need to come out of the cycle. So, this, these are the tools. In Indian intellectual tradition, 
we have already understood that speech is dominating, <laughs> speech is or orality dominates and thus it is very clear that oral version of the language is the actual concept of bhasha. Written one is a secondary to it. Western discourse of language is dominate, dominant of the scriptural version that is written version and these are thus just the uh, expressions, written expressions. In any of the caves, a lot of symbols are engraved. So, that is a written version of expression and still we are in a state that we are not able to read a lot of the scripts which are available in different caves and different manuscripts. There are a lot of availability where there are a lot of symbols. But no one is not reading it. Why? Because we don't know what the symbols are showing. How they were related. That means we, know, we have signifiers. But what was signified? We don't know. So, written version is just an expression. Now, written version is just an artistic expression. Now, so, written version is just an artistic expression. Indian tradition has two forms, the tradition, the characteristics, if you are asked in a question like what are the characteristics of Indian intellectual tradition, we have two types of traditions, one is the learned tradition and second is the popular tradition. Learned tradition means the, tra uh, the scholars who actually created the texts, the shastras, all the shastras we are having in Apara knowledge, they are available to us in a form of a text, particular text. So, here we have a richness of uh, textual versions in orality also and in written versions also. First thing is orality, written version comes later on because I told you Rig Veda is not the written script version, Rig Veda is recited and passed through generations, that is why it has different pathas. Eight of the paathas I told you ki eight tarah ke paath hain aur usme bhi hum kaise preserve karte hain har sound ko one two two one so many paathas so many variations so Rig Veda it, itself orally disseminated orally passed on after that only it was written and till now whatever research we have we know that it was written approximately at that time when Kashmir was the dominating center for Indian intellectual tradition where all the Rig Vedas were actually writ got written and that at, at that time in Kashmir there was a uh, dominating uh, you can say like a mandal of uh, intellectuals, scholars, acharyas. Ek aisa, jase abhi aapka ye PPA hai, you consider like it is a round structure with a temple top pointed upwards and that is filled up with the acharyas and uh, Shastragya. So, sabhi ne baiht kar ek jagha par jaha par ye sare Shastra likhe, wo samay Kashmir mein Kashmir, wo sthaan uh, Kashmir mein Kashmir Mandal ke naam se jana jata hai. That is why Mandal is a word which is used to denote the architectural temple structures where we form so many surrounding or circular designs. Round and round, round and round. Mandal art, dekhi kabhi. What is mandal art? That is round, round shapes. From the round shapes, we create so many mandalas, covering the inside one, and then uh, uh, you can say opening up to the periphery. So that is mandal, and that is not one-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. You can just you assume that like it is the top is pointed one, and the bottom is open opened one with a periphery as a form of circle. So, mandal is structure, a kind of a house which was built in a, in a type of architecture which is understood as mandal and there the scholars started writing uh, the compositions of Vedas also. So, first time they were being scripted till that it was orally disseminated. Still whatever gurukulas we are having in minority itself, but it's still kuch hai jo abhi bhi usi tradition ke hesaab se scholars ko tayyar karte hai. They, the recitation is still in continuous progress and they recite it regularly. So, the tradition is continuous. Abhi bhi aisa nahi keh sakte, the tradition has got disrupted. No. 
डिक्लाइन हुआ है डिसरप्शन नहीं हुआ एंड दैट्स द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ इंडियन कॉर्पस इंडियन कॉर्पस में हमेशा ऐसा कोई ना कोई स्कॉलर पैदा होता ही है जो वापस उस चीज नॉलेज को री इस्टेब्लिश करता है जस्ट लाइक शंकराचार्य जस्ट लाइक अभिनव गुप्त दे री इस्टेब्लिश एवरीथिंग वेन द थिंग्स वर फॉर गॉटन इन द सेम वे लॉट ऑफ द स्कॉलर्स आर अवेलेबल राइट नाउ ऑल्सो विच आर इन ट्रेडिशन एंड दे आर ट्राइंग टू इस्टेब्लिश द थिंग्स सो दैट द थिंग्स कैन नॉट बी फॉर गॉटन सेकेंड इज पॉपुलर वॉट इज पॉपुलर दैट इज पज इज द ओरल ट्रेडिशन ऑफ नरेशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन टी वी इन टेलीविजन आप बहुत सारे चैनल देखेंगे आस्था एंड सो मैनी हमारे ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स टी वी में बैठ कर ये सब देखते हैं और सुनने के काफ़ी फैन होते हैं सो हु वॉट हैपन्स इन द मॉर्निंग फ्रॉम द सिक्स ए एम समबडी इज गिविंग द प्रवचन एंड ऑल द पीपल आर वेरी इंटरेस्टेड इन लिसनिंग टू दैट That is known as pravachan parampara, and that is katha pravachan parampara. ऐसा नहीं है कि वो किसी के कहीं के professor हैं या कहीं से बहुत ज़्यादा पढ़ के आए हैं तभी वहाँ है नहीं वो जो बता रहे हैं वो कथा प्रवचन परम्परा का हिस्सा है इन आज टेलीविजन है आज कल तक नहीं था दैट इज सो वेन द वी वर नॉट हैविंग दैट काइंड ऑफ मीन्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन देन ऑल्सो दैट ट्रेडिशन वॉज इन प्रैक्टिस एंड हाउ इट वॉज प्रैक्टिस इन ईच ऑफ द विलेज इन ईच ऑफ द विलेज वेन वी हैर हैविंग आवर फेस्टिवल्स राइट नाउ वॉट वी आर हैव प्रैक्टिसिंग इन आवर फेस्टिवल्स एज अ फैशन दैट वॉज अ ट्रेडिशन वेन इन आवर फेस्टिवल्स ऑल द पीपल गैदर एट अ सम प्लेस एंड दे स्टार्ट नरेटिंग द स्टोरीज ऑफ द शास्त्र जस्ट लाइक उपनिषद जस्ट लाइक फ्रॉम रामायण फ्रॉम महाभारत वो प्रवचन होता था एंड वो खुद करते थे कोई टेलीविजन पे टेलीकास्ट करने के लिए नहीं करते थे एंड ऑल द पीपल ऑफ द विलेज वर सो इंटरेस्टेड दैट दे लिसन दैट सो इन ईच ऑफ द विलेज सम और द अदर पर्सन वेरी एल्डरली वेरी स्कॉलरली पर्सन विल बी प्रबुद्ध पर्सन वृद्ध पर्सन व्यक्ति जो बताता था सब कुछ और सभी उसको ऑथराइज मानते थे एवरी वन कंसिडर दैट पर्सन एज द मोस्ट इंटेलेक्चुअल पर्सन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर विलेज एंड एज एन अथॉरिटी टू आईडेंट टू गेट द नॉलेज अबाउट राइट एंड रॉन्ग सो वेन देर वॉज अ प्रॉब्लम देर इज दे फेस एनी काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम दे वर इन अ ट्रेडिशन टू गो टू दैट पर्सन टू आस्क फॉर द सोल्यूशन ऑल्सो सो कथा प्रवचन परम्परा वॉज ऑलवेज इन प्रैक्टिस इन आवर ट्रेडिशन फ्रॉम दैट ओनली वी आर नाउ हैविंग आस्था चैनल प्रवचन परम्परा सो नाउ ऑन यूट्यूब ऑल्सो देर आर सो मैनी वर्जन अवेलेबल That is coming from that tradition, katha, pravachan, parampara. Uh, as soon as the technology is progressing, they are also accepting the technology to continue that tradition itself. So the second is the popular version. Popular version doesn't do anything else. They just try to make the people habituated with the, a memory of that story. आप भूल ना जाए उस उसको कंटिन्यू करने के लिए वो बार 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 बताई जाती है टोल्ड एंड री टोल्ड अगेन एंड अगेन इन सम काइंड ऑफ फिगरेटिव वर्जन इन सम काइंड ऑफ क्रिएटिव वर्जन एंड दैट बिकम्स द पॉपुलर वर्जन दैट्स वाई वेन एवर यू गेट अ टाइम टू नो अबाउट रामायण यू विल फाइंड स्पेशली रामायण दैट देर आर सो मैनी वर्जन ऑफ द रामायण केवल एक वही राम रामायण नहीं है जो हम प्रैक्टिस करते हैं या जिसको हम रामलीला में फॉलो अप करते हैं इन कम्बोडिया इन अनादर इंडोनेशिया एंड अनादर कंट्रीज आल्सो द रामलीला इज परफॉर्म्ड एंड रामायण इज अवेलेबल इन डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ नरेशंस व्हेन यू रीड देम यू विल फाइंड सो मैनी ऑफ डिफरेंसेज फ्रॉम द स्टोरी द रामायण वी नो वाई इट हैपन्स बिकॉज रामलीला इज अ पार्ट ऑफ कथा प्रवचन परंपरा इट वॉज नरेटेड एमंग द पीपल एंड इट वॉज शोड टू द पीपल इन एक्शन लाइक अ ड्रामा नाट्य की तरह उसको प्रस्तुत भी किया गया सो रामलीला बिकेम अ पॉपुलर ट्रेडिशन सो रामलीला इज पॉपुलर ट्रेडिशन वन ट्रेडिशन इज ऑफ लर्नेड ट्रेडिशन विच प्रेजेंट्स एज द 
textual versions, in oral dissemination also and in written versions also. And second tradition is a popular version which is available among the mass also. So, we will get a lot of Gita's interpretation. Many people have written a lot of things on it. That's why we are having variations and there is no restriction. That's the most important point. If in our academics we try to create something which is having a different version from a, that particular uh, format which we are being provided, we won't be allowed to do that. Because hard and fast is everything. You should see it. You should In our schooling also, the way of teaching like, every answer should be this. It's not necessary. Every one who understands, that will be the answer. So, the variation of understanding, variation of the interpretations and variation of the knowledge, also the format it was presented is completely liberty based. That is why our manuscripts range from the size also. It is not a size to lekar, it is not size tak available. Hai. If you go to the libraries of the Rashtri Sanskrit Sansthan, whenever you get a time, you go to the, to the Sanskrit section, you will get a lot of the corpus related with the same composition that is Mahabharat. Jitne aaj tak aapne dekhe nahi hai, utne available hai. That means ki uh, itna variation hai. And all that variation which is possible for the scholars is kept preserved till today. It's, we are in an effort. Those who know, they try to preserve it. Indian knowledge tradition is cumulative, the first characteristic. So basically, if, if, uh, I, if the question is like uh, two forms of Indian knowledge tradition, answer will be popular and learned. Now characteristics of the Indian tra knowledge tradition, so it is cumulative comprehensive, ancient and continuous without a break with the history of ideas, the most important thing. So, my, so basically we have five characteristics. First is cumulative, second is comprehensive and third is ancient, continuous, very important, the fifth one is the history of ideas. What is history of ideas? I told you a lot of our Shastras cannot be dated back because they represent the history of Manvantaras. So, we are in a habit of making history of ideas like Charvak is a Darshan which says there is, there is no need to uh, run behind the search of the God or ultimate, we are enjoying the life that is sufficient. So, Charvak is also there. Jain and Bodh, they also do not focus on that. They, they say that if your behavior aspects are good, then it is very good. You keep it intact. That is why when uh, a lot of questions were being answered to the Buddha uh, about Atma and Paramatma, he kept silent. उन्होंने कोई उत्तर नहीं दिया मतलब ऐसा भी पर प्रश्न होता है जिसको आव्याकृत कोटि का कहते हैं आव्याकृत means the question which cannot be answered into वाक्तत्व so basically he kept silent when the question about the आत्मा and परमात्मा was asked so Jain and Bodh is also there that is that is also a kind of uh, idea or knowledge available till that particular person then again we moved ahead so many सांख्य then uh, uh, Vedant, Sankhi ke after Sankhi Yoga, then uh, Mimansa, then Vedant, then Akashmir Shavadarshan. So these are coming as a kind of history of ideas which were presented after systematic observation and then experimentation, then concluded as a theory. So basically they passed through the scientific procedure of investigation, then they presented themselves. So, we can trace back the history or a lineage of the ideas or the knowledge. In another words, idea is here mentioning the knowledge, but we cannot date back the date or you can say the, uh, the time period because time is a concept in an Indian understanding is as a cyclical. I told you 71 times Chaturyugi passes, then one 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 that is going to be formed. So, 71 times the cycle is for going on, and the same events of Mahabharat war is happening 71 times. Number one, agar aise dekha jai. And if you uh, consider yourself in Kali itself from the uh, first. Uh, 
uh, time or you can say that from the moment you are getting awake, you are in a state of Mahabharata itself because continuously you are in a conflict. Class ke liye jana hai ki nahi jana hai? Aat baje se neen bhi aa rahi hai, sona bhi hai. So lete kya farak padta hai? Waise bhi boring class hai. What is that? The conflict is present from the moment you get awakened. So Mahabharata is happening at single moment continuously within yourself and that's something which needed to be understood ki har cheez to cycle mein hai repeat honi hi hai so we are in a state of creating the lineage of the knowledge not the lineage of the dating system that means humko is baat se zyada farak padta hai ki gyan pass hua ki nahi is baat se farak nahi padta hai ki wo kab hua tha so the the question which was uh, which is right now presented from the west your ramayana is a myth your mahabharat is a myth or it is a part of mythology it is an imaginative thing wo unki samasya hai kyunki unhe samajh bhi nahi aayega na 71 times manvantar pass hoke purana mein kaise likh diye gaye so that's their problem you need to understand ki ha, you need to understand the procedure how you can actually directly perceive that knowledge which is available in a cyclical time structure you have to enhance the cognitive apparatus then you can identify the uh, value of pi then you can ident calculate the value of pi you can identify what zero is you be arya bhatt you be the bhaskaracharya first you use first learn how to use your, your own cognitive imparted intelligence to channelize the cosmic energy to get resonated with the cosmic energy present or you get to get resonated with the ultimate then you try to understand how it uh, it was presented so unko samajh mein nahi aata isliye unke liye mythology hai but for us it is a history of ideas history of knowledge knowledge is central to the indian ethos each and every person runs behind the knowledge here each and every the aptitude is like who am i the greatest or highest quest kon hu main pehle ye batao so once you are getting awake automatically first you try to recognize yourself or recollect that i am this person so automatically the knowledge is the central to the complete tradition indian intellectual tradition prescribes three paths because knowledge is central to us so we uh, investigated three possible ways of deliverance so, in this way this is also one method the way i am teaching you i am trying to disseminate the knowledge to you that is gyan gyan ki parampara in shrimad bhagavad gita krishna is telling the same thing to arjun कि कि यहाँ ब्रह्म को या सत्य को जानने के तीन रास्ते हैं ज्ञान योग कर्म योग एंड भक्ति योग सो योग इज ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स ही इज नरेटिंग और डिस्क्राइबिंग द सेम थिंग ज्ञान योग कर्म योग एंड भक्ति योग यू कैन नो द अल्टीमेट रियलिटी और नो अबाउट योर ओन एग्जिस्टेंस बाय द थ्री मैथड्स दीज थ्री मैथड्स आर द मैथड्स ऑफ डिलीवरेंस ज्ञान लाइक दिस वन द टीचिंग मैथड वन इज वन इज टीचिंग सेकेंड इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड ट्राइंग टू एक्यूमुलेट इट second is action once you start your journey by yourself the empirical knowledge you have to attain that empirical knowledge by suppose after understanding the kundalini jagran prakriya you started practicing yoga or some kind of meditative technique to rise up or to awake your dormant kundalini then it is action karma yoga and the last is bhakti those who cannot do that thing like those who cannot practice mudras those who cannot do pranayam the physical body structures are not so uh, good so are not so healthy that so that the, these kind of practices can be made so what is the possible option available devotion devotion is that thing you surrender yourself to yourself खुद को खुद के लिए ही समर्पित करना है दैट मीन्स आई एम सरेंडरिंग माई लिमिटेशन टू माई सेल्फ हु इज ग्रैंड इन एक्सिस्टेंस सो फ्रॉम द ग्रॉसेस्ट स्टेट आई एम सरेंडरिंग माई सेल्फ टू द सटलेस्ट स्टेट दैट इज समथिंग डिवोशन दैट इज भक्ति सो इन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स वेदर वी आर वर्शिपिंग शिवा वेदर वी आर वर्शिपिंग कृष्णा any any devote any kind of deity which we consider as a deity even surya upasana 
sun. That's because we are pagan culture, we been worshipped the nat natural elements or we worshipped the nature. So, automatically when we devote our limitations to the some higher entity that is deliverance or uh, devotion of our limitations to the ourself because the consciousness present inside of us is the consciousness present in that particular entity. So, the uh, you can say the existence is not separate, the appearance is of se separation or segregation or duality or multiplicity. And the last is the authority, lok, who is authorized to identify, koi examiner nahi bulaya jayega. No, no ex in, in, uh, external examiner will be there to take your viva or to uh, examine your thesis. No, the usage is the authority. Lok pramad hai. Yadi kisi cheez ka satya janna hai, to lok me uski study karni hai. That's why we they tried to implement uh, this thing by case study. Ab case study laiye. In psychology, in modern sciences, a lot of case studies are done. Why? Ultimately, they want to know the actual grand reality that to how by the sampling method that means ki agar ek billion log hai to sabka to survey nahi kar payenge aap lekin kya karenge you will select some 100 samples then you will put up a theory then you will prove it with the sampling uh, data of 100 then you will implement it to make a drug which is successful and then after some time when there will be side effects, drawbacks, setbacks, you will change the theory. So, the next will be coming who will just put extra or opposite understanding and then again prove his own theory. Again the research will go, again the same thing will come and again some new experiment will be there. So, we become a consumer or we become a subject of experience. जो कि आप कर एक सब्जेक्ट ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंट जो कि हम पर होता है लाइक पैरासिटामॉल और एंड आईब्यूप्रोफेन समटाइम्स एगो इट वाज वेरी पॉपुलर फॉर पेनकिलर नाउ इट इज डिस्कार्डेड बैंड व्हाय अगर ये तब अच्छी नहीं थी तो अब अच्छी है उन कैसे है और अगर अब अच्छी नहीं है तो तब अच्छी कैसे थी आखिर उसका कुछ तो इम्पैक्ट था ना दैट मींस योर लिमिटेशन ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्रिएटेड समथिंग यू इम्प्लीमेंटेड इट यू फाउंड द नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट्स यू विड्रॉ इट सो दिस हैपेंस बिकॉज यू आर टेकिंग दिस लिमिटेशंस यू आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट योर सैंपलिंग मेथड इज फॉल्टी मैथड First you rectify your method of instrumentation and experiment, then go for generalization. So we in the mod western systems or in the modern practices, we do not make a conscious attempt to identify the limitations of the research which is already being done in Indian corpus. That is why the authority lies in usage. इन लोक लोक में अगर बता दिया गया है कि खाना या भोजन करने स्पेसिफिकली इन आयुर्वेद द मेंशनिंग इज लाइक इफ यू कंबाइन घी घी एंड अनदर सम देयर इज अनदर वन थिंग शहद घी और शहद अगर सम मात्रा में लिए जाए दैट मींस इक्वल प्रोपोर्शंस इफ यू टेक बोथ ऑफ देम इन इक्वल प्रोपोर्शंस दे आर पॉइजन because the observation is universal. Aap kabhi bhi karke dekh lije, sab se asaan zahar mil jayega. So, in Ayurveda, each and everything is prescribed on the basis of the usages which are generalized. And aisa nahi hai ki woh keval sao logo pe kaam karega aur sao ke baad ek sao ek jo aega us par kaam nahi karega. You need to have that understanding first. Then go for the experimentations. If you are able to read uh, Sushrut Sanita or Charak Sanita in any time in your life, after ma'am se picha chhut jayega, jab, tab, to aap dekhiyega ki aapko bohat zyada jannne ko milega, jo aapne ab tak socha bhi nahi hai. That is the basic target for introducing Indian corpus to all the students who are completely in the lack of knowledge or we have been completely uh, created like that that we are in a lack of knowledge without about that corpus so for this lecture this is sufficient in the next class we will discuss some more points which are coming from as a summary from our course itself thank you